Hey everybody, I was asked if I would create from Harry Potter um, Dumbledore's tomb or the white tomb, Dumbledore's grave. Um, I'm not really all that familiar with uh, the Harry Potter movies, although I've seen a little bit. And so um, I'm going to do this from a, a very beginner's perspective. All right, uh, we'll go over every little thing about the interface. Uh, or anything along those lines, but I'll try to do this slow. Um, this is a um, an easy model to make, but if you're a beginner in Blender, it can be uh, rather daunting. So I'll try to explain what I'm doing, and hopefully you can follow along if you're interested in this. All right. So what you see here is the default cube. I've just selected it, and it's turned orange. And I'm in object mode. Of course, if I press tab, I go into edit mode. And in edit mode, I can select either vertices, or I can come up here. I can select edges. See, it turns in white. I've selected edges. Of course, you can hold down shift and select more than one edge. And go alt A, and that'll deselect everything. Or I can click here and select actual faces. And I like to do a lot of the editing of this in edit mode. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do here. Um, the grave is not uh, a cube, it's more of a rectangle shape. So with the whole thing selected like that, I can scale this and make it a little bit longer in the Y axis so it resembles a rectangle a bit more. So to do that, I'm going to press S and then Y, and that will constrain the scaling just to the Y axis. And then it's going to pull my mouse. And as you can see, it will get longer. So we're just going to do this by eye. Let's pull it out as long as you like. You just move your mouse either way, like this. So let's say I did something like that. I would now have a bit more of a rectangle. Now I do have a couple images here. So I've got this one. So we're going to create this this part here. Now, um, as you can see, it's angled like this. But I, I would assume that it would go down sort of straight like that. Um, to sort of have a, a rectangle that has has an angle like that. All right, so let's work on that. Let's press Alt A to deselect everything and just have a look at this. Okay, what I think I'm going to do is let's let's in face selection this one here, or you can if you were in another mode see I'm in vertex selection there alt A to deselect you can press three and that'll go here so this is one two or three so if I'm here I just press three I can now select the face I'm holding the middle mouse button by the way to pan around like this I'm gonna select this bottom face and let's pull this up in the Z direction like that make it a bit shorter like this all right and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale. I'm going to press S, and that's going to scale in every direction. And I'm just going to pull my mouse, and it'll start looking like that. Now, let's look from the top down, because I want to show you something. Let's press number 7 on the numpad. All right, and you'll see that this angle here and here in the Y is um, bigger <laughs> There's more length here than in the X. So I'm going to SX. I'm going to scale in the X. Watch what happens when I do that and pull. SX. Pull it out. Now they're, they, look, they look more even. Right? I'm not sure that I like how much, how small this is yet. So I think I'm going to select that top, press 7. And I'm going to press S again. And then I scale it just so it's a bit bigger because we're going to create a hole in here after all right so we've got this part here let's select the bottom again i'm in face selection still and now we're going to extrude downward so i'm going to press e to extrude and left click and then pull down in the y to make this bottom part now i can't see that part it's under the ground so i'm just going to come down a certain distance. I press Alt A to deselect everything and look at my work. So this is what we have so far. Alright. So 
you know, you can adjust this as much as you feel you need to. If you felt that was too high, you can select that face and you can pull it down in the Z. Maybe we'll do a little bit of that. Mm, on the other hand, it looks pretty long. So I think I'm going to undo that. Control Z, Control Z. Get back to this. I could still select this bottom face. And let's say I wanted to make this angle even more um, interesting. Um, with that selected, I could press Control and Plus, and that will select the next row of geometry. If I do Control Plus again, it continues. Control minus comes down. Let's say I wanted to go from to there, seven to look from the top, and scale in the X even more like that pull it out and then scale in the Y even more and make it look kind of equal mm, might select that face scale in the X a bit more want it a bit bigger scale in the Y a bit more all right we could do this all night I am gonna stick with that I think and we are ready to continue I'm gonna press tab and go back into object mode and to make it look a little more interesting, I'm going to add a bevel. So I'm going to come over here to the wrench icon, choose Add Modifier Bevel. I'm going to choose three segments. All right, starting to look softer. And for the amount, I'm going to switch this to 0 0.02. And now it looks just a little bit nicer. Okay, so far so good. So we've got this part here. Now I have another image here, and as you can see, there's an indentation in here. There's a piece, like a slab that would lay on top and the body would be in there. So we'll work on that in a moment, but just before I do that, I want to show you there are these little rectangles here that look like they're almost the, the width of this middle piece here. So let's make those. And to make those, let's select our object. Let's go back into edit mode press 3 for face selection and select this face. Let's use this to build a rectangle here and a rectangle there. So let's copy this face or duplicate it by going Shift and D. Click and then pull it up just to separate it so we can see it there. Alright, this piece here is still connected to all of this. If I press A to select everything, I get, I get all of it. Let's make this a new object on its own. Press P for separate and just click the first selection there. Okay, go back into object mode with tab and now click on this. You can see that's one piece and that's one piece. Let's go back to this piece selected. Let's go tab to go into edit mode and let's make this narrower. And let's look from the top again. So it lines up perfectly right here so far, but it's the whole length. Let's go into edge selection, this one here, or press 2. Click here, select that edge, and let's pull it narrower in the Y. And make it something like this. Okay, so I've got that piece. A to select it all. Now we're going to give it some thickness, or some height. Press E to extrude click left click there and then pull it up in the Z direction and make it something like that let's go back into object mode you'll notice that my arrows are over here because we started from this object this is a new object but the arrows aren't on it let's choose object set origin origin to geometry so so in other words my transform tool or my gizmo will now pop to the to pretty much the center of this object and when I select this object it's right there so with that done we can pull this down a little bit but it's not exactly the same sort of width as as the original object so let's go back into edit mode press A to select everything let's scale it a little bit in the X it's a little narrow so let's go S X only pull it in just a little bit and let's select it all actually and just push it down a little bit on the Y. 
back into object mode so it's not exactly at the end so we have that let's just go back to our reference image and see so this piece here and here's another one it looks to me like they're actually in further so we're going to take this piece and i'm going to slide it down a little bit just in the y direction all right seven to look from the top view and there it is now i can copy this down or i can mirror it down so it's exactly in the same position but on the other side so it's up to you which one you want to do probably doesn't really matter but let's try mirroring in order f to mirror this object down to here with respect to the main grave part i'll call it um, we need to make sure that the 3d cursor which is this thing with the red and white is right in the middle of this now we haven't moved it and it is in the middle so like sort of like the the main pivot point is right in the middle so if you select this piece and come up here and go object set the origin of this object to the 3d cursor you will actually move that transform tool or gizmo to here and now if I just press like R you can see it, it, it rotates around that pivot point that 3d cursor with that done you can then come over to the modifiers I'm gonna press the arrow to minimize that bevel choose add modifier mirror and then try the different axes here if it doesn't look right try Y oh I see it there but I don't need it in the X as well so I'll uncheck that so I've mirrored this object around the Y axis and I've got it in the exact same position on the other side now I don't have to apply these modifiers in other words go in here and click apply um, because I'm not going to be doing anything other than just having those sit there all right now that we have that let's come back to here and look okay so there's a big piece on top and that it's hard to tell from this image it looks pretty much like it's almost the same distances from here to here and the width as well so I'm not really sure but I think what we could do is we could make another rectangle to put on top here let's go ahead and select this object go into edit mode and I want to select this face so I'm going to press 3 and that moves it over to face selection and select this I'm going to use this to build that top rectangle so let's duplicate it shift D click and pull it up to its resting just about on top of there so I've got that um, but again let's if we if we press a it's part of, of, of the bottom grave piece so let's select it again and let's press P separate it click on selection go back into object mode and now we have that as a separate object compared to this select that again press uh, tab to go into edit mode a to select it all and let's give this some height so when extrude E, left click pull it up until you get the height that you want shift a to deselect tab to go back into object mode now the nice thing about doing it this way by selecting a piece and duplicating it and then breaking it out is you get the same modifiers here you can see I've got the bevel modifier on as as on here instead of having to re-add it and it's also in a good position I just want to come back and look at this that's this piece extending out to here I assume that that's kind of how it's supposed to be I can now select this now my gizmo again is down on this main object if I really cared I could go set origin to geometry put it in the middle of this I'm going to press 1 to look from the front and I'm going to oops, just zoom in I'm rolling my mouse wheel and I'm holding shift and middle mouse button to move around like this see shift and middle mouse I'm just going to pull this down a little bit so it looks like it kind of rests on there and deselect and I could even hold click on this one and then shift and click on this one so I got both of them and look from the front and I can pull them down a little bit if I want them to look like they rest on there a bit more so this is what we have so far I hope it looks like the original thing now we're going to create a little bit of an indentation on this thing um, so 
I can't see it in this view and if I come to this one I see this so I'm gonna assume that uh, these blocks or whatever rest over top of this and then there's this plate like thing so we need a sort of a hole in here so let's get rid of these for the moment so we can see just this there's a few different ways of doing this I'm going to select this one I'm going to hold shift and hold this one and let's hide these and the way you hide it is by pressing H now they're hidden to bring them back press alt H and they come back all right so let's select this and hold down shift and select this press H and hide them now we can just focus on this so I selected it I'm going to look from the top go into edit mode press 3 make sure we're in face selection and select this now let's think about this we're going to make another rectangle here that we're going to push down so I'm going to use the inset tool or inset command I'm going to press I and you can see a dotted line in across I'm now going to pull my mouse in and you you can see this I'm going to bring it in and hold shift and it'll move slower you have more control so I'm going to click there and release the shift come back to my image I can see this alright looks like I need to come in a bit more but I've already used the inset so what I'm going to do is press S and X pull it in a bit S and Y pull it in a bit and get it roughly even I think that's okay and so now we're going to make a hole E and I'm just going to pull down in the Z direction or I can use the arrow come down a certain ways let's deselect and go back into object mode and look at that okay there's now a hole in there if I want periodically I can turn off this and turn off this and I just see my my model so I can go alt H even and just have a look at this sitting on there okay let's turn these back on and I'm going to select these two pieces and hide them again all right we're almost done here what we want to do now is put this piece here um, I don't know exactly how this thing is put together um, or how this piece would stay but uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and in edit mode I'm gonna select this face and I'm gonna create that piece that goes on top so I'm gonna go shift D to duplicate it I'm gonna pull it up away and let's separate this out P separate by selection go back into object mode I now have this piece and I have that let's take this piece and give it a little bit of thickness so it seems like it's a slab of cement or whatever so concrete I don't know what you call that stuff let's give this some thickness let's press E to extrude and let's come down a little bit say we want it that thick alt A to deselect and tab to come back into object mode let's set the origin to this I can come up here and click that or I can right click with the object selected and set origin to geometry that'll just bring my gizmo or my transform tool right to the middle Let's pull it down and position it kind of in there and deselect. Does that look okay like that? Yeah, we could go with something like that. Let's Alt H and bring everything back. You don't really see that unless you were to take these. I'll take that and sort of slide them out. You would start to see that. Or if you were animating this and those pieces fell away, you would see that. And to make it look a little bit nicer, you can come up here, press this, and turn on the cavity shader, and you, you will see the edges a little bit better. And we can turn this off. It's possible that, number three, that this face should come down a bit more for a bit of a deeper grave. I'm not sure. Uh, of course, the ground is around there, so I just go Shift A mesh, plane and I'll just scale this out sort of just to pretend there's some ground I'll scale that in the Y too just scale it so you know maybe there's there's the ground uh, we could uh, select it and right click and go subdivide 
and down here we could just bump this up to say let's try 15 now let's try uh, 25 just for the fun of it here we could add um, the displace now come over to the textures you don't have to do this and choose maybe clouds I don't know if that's it. now we can go with that and then just, just lower the strength a bit um, maybe control 2 just make it look a little bit like the ground there um, you know just to give us the idea of it all right so we've got the, the grave sitting in there and I'll turn this back on actually and uh, I'll just pull it out <laughs> pull it down just for now uh, so you can see the different parts that we've got here all right so that seems to be uh, what it is we can turn on uh, shadow if we want to make it look a little bit better we can go to matte cap Mm, there is one thing I should point out. I noticed that when I did that, this turned dark. I'm going to click back on here, and I'm going to go down to face orientation. And what we can see is a bunch of blue and some red. Uh, that means that the polys on this are flipped the wrong way. So I'm going to select it and go into edit mode, and A to select the whole thing. Go Alt-N for normals, recalculate outside and then deselect and go back and now the polys are facing the correct way all right so that's it that's what i've got for the grave and if you happen to move it out of the way just be aware that you're going to have to move this back and it may not go perfectly where you want it but this is a pretty simple model you can pretty much just lift this up and look from another angle and just slide it over i mean it's not you know it's probably not meant to be perfect anyhow um you know now uh, i'm noticing that this is the same width here these pieces and this as this and maybe these are supposed to be a bit narrower let's have one last look at this yeah they fit under there a bit differently so actually i would probably go into edit mode select that one because we've got it mirrored uh it'll happen on this one as well let's just go s and x let's just bring those in just a little bit you know if you have it like that okay so that's how i would create uh that tomb